Okay, let's control the dogs, guy. Okay, guys. Okay. 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 What's good fam? It is your boy Uber Ants and I am back with another banger. Oh sorry about that guys. But uh, today we're going to be doing something a little different. As you see I have my phone with me because uh, I have a lot of information to give you. So don't, just forgive me if I look at my phone a little bit. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about the cost associated. How y'all like my Mr. Rogers moment right here? <laughs> You like my little Mr. Rogers moment? We're gonna be talking about the costs associated between renting a car, renting a car to Uber in, and owning a car to Uber in. So, let's get it. First thing that I wanna do is thank everybody for coming through. Real talk. Uh, Cody, quiet. Uh, I wanna thank you guys. I wanna thank you guys for coming through to kick it with me. Uh, as you may have seen from uh, some of my other videos, we make a variety of content on this channel. Everything from scratching a whole book of lottery tickets to, uh, to uh, me riding around in the scat pack and uh, actually your personal favorite, the Amazon mystery boxes, which we actually are going to be doing uh, every Wednesday night. Uh, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Uh, excuse me. Just a second, guys. That's not what we're going to be talking about today. What we're going to be talking about today is Ubering, right? So um, if you're out Ubering, real talk, you may not want to go and get a new car like this to Uber. Uh, it's going to put a lot of miles on your car and you just don't want that to kind of be a day-to-day -day situation. However, uh, with that being said, you can get you a... You can get you a, a little car that you can kind of scoot around town in the Uber in. <clears throat> uh, real talk, today we're talking about renting a car to Uber in versus owning a car. And you're not. Um, so we're going to be talking about that and I'm going to give you my top five pros and cons. This is my day-to-day -day Uber car. This is a personally owned vehicle. I've rented them and I also own them. So I got first-hand knowledge and experience and I'm gonna give you my top five pros and cons on owning them and the top five pros and cons on renting them. So we're gonna start, just cause I'm leaning against this one, we're gonna go ahead and start with owning. All right, so the number one, uh, actually we're gonna start with uh, the pros of owning the car, actually. I'm a man, real talk, the pros of owning your own car to Uber, the number one pro to that is money. Damn near every trip I make in this vehicle, I get almost 100% of that. Uh, and we're gonna elaborate on that a, a little bit a little bit more. So uh, the number two benefit of having your own car is the tax implications to it. Uh, you get 56 cents per mile. And that's not including uh, whether you get new tires, you can write that off. If you gotta go and get new uh, uh, windshield wipers, they all become tax write-offs. So when it's your own vehicle, you get a lot better tax write-offs for that. Uh, so that brings me to number three. Uh, the number three pro on this would be that there is substantially less pressure. Now, I don't really know how to kind of pit that. It'll become a little bit more apparent as the video goes on. But real talk, there's a lot less pressure in owning your own vehicle. Uh, than in renting and like I said we'll elaborate more so stay with the video if you want to know more about that uh, the number four reason uh, the number four pro uh, there is none <laughs> yeah there is no no fourth pro we got one two and three uh, but they are substantial the fact that every penny you make minus gas uh, kind of goes into the car you got to understand tires become a tax write-off 
So you're gonna get that money back. But uh, you're just basically putting gas into the vehicle at this particular point. So that could be a good thing. Um, and like there's no number four, there's no number five. So let's get into the cons of owning your own car. And I think we're all gonna know the number one. I'm gonna give you two seconds to guess it. <clears throat> no, I'm not. It's wear and tear on your fucking car. It will tear your car up quick. The number one issue is the wear and tear. Uh, dead ass, you're gonna see it. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna notice it. All right. So if you get you're using your own car, like we were talking about with the new car, you can go out in it sometime, but you don't want to run it six, eight hours a day. Not like that. Uh, number two, this is your personal vehicle, and there will be times where. You may have to deal with a disrespectful passenger. Somebody might vape in your car or slam a door. Okay, Matter of fact, go. just today, a guy, I wonder if we can grab the clip. I wonder if we got the clip. But a guy got into my car with two, not one, not one, but two large breed dogs. High energy, all of, I actually had to ask him, hey man, can you, can, can you control your dogs? Can you control your dogs? I'm sorry guys, I'm out here shivering. That would be the number two. It is your personal car. You want to think about that. Number three, the unexpected expenses. Uh, and I know this personally firsthand. Last year, I slid into a curb, $1,800 for a control arm. You don't know what's going to happen. You can get a flat tire, a nail in the tire. You got to be prepared for all of them. Uh, and number four, a lot of you probably didn't think about this, but it does come up if you're a real Uber driver. The number four thing would be the weather. Right now it's cooler and it's getting darker and it's doing its thing, but if it's snowing outside, if it's icy on the roads, you don't want to bring your car out. You're just going to tear it up. Uh, that $5 run was not worth that $1,800 control arm. I know that firsthand. So that would be number four. Number five is the uncertainty of the job, meaning your job could end at the next red light. Real talk, somebody blows through it and they total out that car, you don't have a backup plan unless you have a couple thousand sitting around to go buy you a new car or a couple thousand to go rent you a car on the spot it can get difficult so you got to kind of be prepared for that uh but because it's getting cold out here we're going to head back in the house and i'm gonna give you guys the pros and the cons of the rental oh yeah so guys uh, we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of actually renting an Uber today. And it is a little bit different, right? Um, there's a few things you have to understand about renting an Uber. Uh, but we're going to talk about the pros and the cons. And FYI, this is not a rental. Just a FYI. You can see more of this car on my channel, man. Look around. We do some crazy stuff with it. Uh, but one of the pros, uh, one of the biggest pros is you, you don't have to worry about the car at all. So if you turn around and you rent you a car, if it gets blind, you do have to worry about you and your physical safety, but it'll have airbags. It'll be up to standards. If somebody hits you, guess what? You turn the car in, you can rent another car, you can move on. So uh, just the fact that it's a rental and it's not yours, uh, you just don't have to worry about it. Uh, number two, you don't have to worry about passengers throwing up in the car. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's not yours. If they get mad, get out, slam a door and the window breaks, you report it to the police, you turn the car back into the rental company. Uh, and number three, this is prob probably, prob probably, 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 <laughs> this is one of my favorite. I should have stuck it in sooner. If somebody could say that word for me uh, in the comments, it'll probably uh, work out for us. <laughs> <laughs> the number three thing, surprisingly, is the weather. We live in Colorado. It gets snowy. Sometimes I'm up in the mountains. Sometimes I'm up in the hills. Uh, especially, I had this RAV4. I looked forward to going out in that. I will wake up and see snow like, baby, I'm gone. Uh, one, because you don't have to worry about the car, other drivers that can't drive in the snow. Uh, you're a lot more apt to see that icy, snowy day and be like, I'm finna go and, and, and head out and do that. Uh, another pro would be, uh, and this is going to sound kind of petty, uh, but you get to change the vehicle out every once in a while. I'm a car guy. I like cars. I have a lot of them myself, but through the Uber program, you know, every three months, every six months, you could take the car back in there and if you want to switch it out, uh, and they even actually have a great program 
for EVs, the uh, the electric vehicles. So if you're interested in that, you may want to go in and take a look at that. If I like them more, I put a link in the comments, but I just don't. <laughs> Number five uh, is, and this is an all time favorite, is this your personal vehicle? Yeah, it's a rental, right? But it's your personal vehicle. So if your wife needs to use it to run to the store, not a problem. Matter of fact, uh, when we have a rental, we actually make that our primary car. My wife might take it to work. She gets off, comes home. I hop in it, go Uber for a little bit, go pick her up, go over to the Sam's, do some shopping. Uh, we've even used it to where we had to pick up firewood or I'll throw a little sheet down there and keep it pushing. It's an Uber. So um, then we're the top five things uh, that are the pros. Then we're the top things that I like. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. The the cons, the cons, and there's a lot of them. So I want you guys to pay attention. Uh, but the cons to renting a car, I'm gonna just give you the first one. The first one is gonna be the cost. Uh, it costs $300 base, base model per week. So you add that up, that's uh, $1,200. That's a $1,200 car note. Right now, okay, you don't have to worry about people hitting you. You don't got to worry about maintenance. They change the oil. If the tires get bald, they put new tires on there. But it's $1,200 a month. That's a lot. So uh, that brings me to number two. Uh, number two would be the cost. Um, <laughs> this bitch costs a lot. That's a lot. Uh, so that would bring me to number three. Uh, and you guys may start to notice a pattern here, but I'm going to say it's the goddamn cost. Real talk, because it's not just the 300. I also paid an additional $50 a week for car insurance. That gives you that peace of mind. So if you slide into somebody else, you're still not on the hook for it. So it does give you that peace of mind. Uh, and number four, I don't even know why I wrote this in there, but it would be the cost. Dead ass. It costs a lot, a lot. Uh, and number five would be the goddamn cost. By the time you put gas in it, and you pay the insurance, you're at almost 600 a week, which makes a lot of pressure because you gotta make that 600 before you make a dime. You gotta get up and go grind that out before you see a penny. And if you don't get up, it's, it's kinda like forces the job. It forces the job. So that's something that you most definitely wanna think about. The cost in my particular case was prohib prohibitive. Uh, but I mean, it depends on everybody's situation. So, um, so that brings me to uh, what do I think is better, renting versus owning? And honestly, I would have to say that depends on your personal situation. If you live in an area where it's really ooh, motion at my front door, but I'm gonna keep going though. Um, if you live in an area where it's really snowy and you know you're running 40, 50 hours a week, and that's a consistent schedule, definitely get a rental, get some all wheel drive and you can run the crap out of it. Uh, but in my particular situation, me and my wife are in the middle of opening up a company. It requires a lot of time. I don't know at which times I'll have to take off to go do things. So in my particular situation, it's better for me to own the vehicle and take a bigger percentage of the profit. Um, yeah, I do have to worry about if somebody hits me I be as careful as I can and I don't go out on inclement days. I try to keep it safe, but it allows me to work 25, 30 hours a week. And if you target peak times, you'll be surprised at how much you can make. And I might make a video on how to target peak times in Uber where you can make a little bit more. Y'all would probably like that. So leave it down in the comments if y'all wanna see that video. Uh, also, uh, speaking of targeted times, my targeted time is actually coming up. That's right, so we have to go. Uh, but if I had to advise somebody else on what they should do pertaining to an uh, Uber, honestly, I would say look for a three to $5,000 car that you can own. Take it out 30, 40 hours a week, closer to the 30, <laughs> right? Take care of it, get you a excellent mechanic to service it regularly and you'll be surprised how much that you guys can make so if in fact you like this video reach down and hit that like button if in fact you like me or any of the other content that we create hit reach down and hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of all future content and we are out of here like we say until next time Let's get it.
twice, I'm just that nice, never bounce on the count, I've been down, I've been out, I bounce back, X5 outside, that's my day to day, I got a driver, he a cancer survivor, he said he quit because he's sick, I get shot at, I bulletproof the lap.